So as I'm out in the garden, kind of harvesting some things, I decided to go back in and get my camera because you guys have been asking for an update on me letting the tomatoes go wild in the garden. Uh, and I decided, you know what? Now is a really good time to just come out and talk through some of the things that are happening in the garden and give a little bit of an update. So let's start with that. I'm gonna start with the San Marzano tomatoes that we planted and we decided we're just gonna allow them to kind of go crazy, go wild and see what happens. I'll tell you what I've noticed. Right now, this is weird. I have not pruned these at all. Now they are starting to get some, some, maybe some blight, uh, some type of fungal issue for sure. All of my tomatoes in, in my garden right now are struggling hardcore. It's been raining nonstop. And that rain has caused some type of infection in the tomatoes. Uh, it, it, it happens, it usually happens a little bit later in the year for me. Um, so I'm not used to dealing with it in July. It's usually like September before I worry about this. So I'm actually really, really sad about it. I'm kind of pulling off some tomatoes now. I do have some more started and I'm hoping that I can have another, I still have quite a bit of time in my area before my first frost. So we're in mid July right now and my first frost is in November and I have tomatoes. I have some indeterminate varieties of tomatoes that I planted several weeks ago. So they're in um, little cups growing right now. They're probably about four weeks old. So I can get another flush of tomatoes. Worst case scenario, if I can't save the ones that I have, I will get another flush before the first frost date, hopefully. Um, but the San Marzano tomatoes, believe it or not, have a lot less disease right now than the rest of my tomatoes. I have not pruned these. Um, I've done nothing to ensure airflow. They are still kind of short and I'm not getting a whole lot of fruit off of them yet. Most of that fruit is still green, but it's starting to come into production. Um, the amount of suckers on these things are absolutely ridiculous. I don't feel like I have more fruit on them than I do the ones that I single stem prune, weirdly. Um, but yeah, it, it, and, and by all accounts, they should be more riddled with disease than the other tomatoes. Cause like I said, there's not very much airflow. So, but they're not, they are actually doing pretty well considering I might actually be able to save these. I'm going to start, I believe a, maybe a hydrogen peroxide spray. I'm going to try to do that this evening here in the next few minutes when I get done with this video. Uh, maybe I'll show you guys that process actually where I do a hydrogen peroxide spray. But anyway, San Marzano tomatoes, let me turn it around and show you. So here are the tomatoes. Uh, like I said, still short and stumpy, but that's okay. I expected them to, to actually be larger, but I think because we're not single stem pruning them, they're not. Now I do have some fruits forming here. Now you'll notice this is this guy's got blossom and rot. I haven't really been watering over here, but I haven't needed to because it's been raining so much. So it's not a lack of water in issue. It's more of the inconsistent water. That's the thing about blossom and rot. Blossom and rot is usually the, the, the plant is not able to uptake calcium out of the soil or nutrients up out of the soil, not because the nutrients aren't in the soil, but because it's not getting consistent water. Now, like I said, you'll see there's, there's, there's some fungal damage here and not a whole lot of fruit as of yet. Uh, I might be able to save this plant. I might do some pruning just to get rid of some of the fungal issues. I was trying to experiment and not do anything, but I want to try to save some fruit if I can to get it to produce some fruit if I can. Um, it's kind of just coming into production though. So it's about the time it's just starting to come into production. That's, the, that's normal. So I'm going to come out here and do a spray. I have lots of things that I need to care for out in my garden actually past couple of days I have not done as much as I need to. Now this is a zucchini plant that is just not gonna make it. <laughs> uh, we've got a lot of things going on here but namely a squash vine borer in both of these here and here. I've tried to save it but as you can see it's just not doing well. 
And my cherry tomatoes, this foliage is just, man, it's just been decimated by, it actually looks like I might have a tomato hornworm on this one. But I've definitely got some type of, maybe that's blight, maybe. I'm gonna come out here and pick the fruits tomorrow and do a spray. I'm also gonna do a BT spray. I might, like I said, I might be dealing with a tomato hornworm because I'm seeing that there's a lot of missing foliage on this guy. And that's usually a pretty good indication of a tomato hornworm and their damage is, is so quick, man. They will, they will decimate your whole garden. Tomato hornworms can decimate your whole tomato crop in a very short period of time. And it's hard to find them if uh, they're they're green. And so you really won't see them. I'm trying to see if I can see any droppings. I actually don't see any droppings. So, but usually something like this where there's just no foliage at all, that's usually from a tomato hornworm. Now it could also be from the disease that's set in. Um, these leaves look absolutely awful. And I, I, like all of my tomatoes are really struggling. This plant, see up here, beautiful growth, right? And then you have down here. And it, we had kept, I mean, it's just awful. I need to trim all of this off and just kind of it just kind of comes right off. It's it's so diseased. I may not be able to save these, like I said, but if not, um, yeah, I can see it's already on all of these leaves up here. And that's kind of the nature of the fungal stuff. It, it comes in, it's gonna, it's almost inevitable. It's almost just always gonna happen. I just hoped it, would gonna, it was gonna be a little bit longer before we had to worry about that. Unfortunately, we're already there, so I'm gonna harvest what I can. Ah, let's harvest this guy. So this right here is actually a beautiful tomato. This is kind of split because of the amount of moisture we have have had. Uh, it's still a wonderful tomato, beautiful tomato. I'll take this in and allow it to finish ripening on the counter. As long as the tomato is has begun to blush, you'll be fine. It's gonna create that chemical and you're still gonna get a really good tasting tomato if you allow it to finish ripening on the counter. Now this is fine. I'm just gonna cut this top part off. I'm gonna allow it to finish ripening and I'll cut this top part off. It's a wonderful tomato. All of my little gold nuggets over there, they're so good. I'm gonna come out and do a spraying and hopefully, hopefully we might be able to save some of these. If not, worst case scenario, like I said, we'll pull them out. I, I'm only gonna, I'll try to save them uh, a little bit and if, if we can't, then we pull them out and we have more to go in their place. No big deal. Here's my little harvest basket. I've got another tomato, Armenian cucumber, some more cucumbers down here. And here are, people have been asking, so here are the containers. My container crops are doing really, really good. I've got flowers, I've got the basil, I've got the beans, I've got the tomatoes here that are kind of starting to flower. No tomatoes on them yet, obviously, it's not been enough time. Basil's looking really good, really healthy. Um, peppers here doing really well. These are bell peppers starting to form, starting to blossom. Cubanelle peppers. So I want to do a quick watering on the container garden. I try to get out here. If it doesn't rain, I pretty much water it every day, at least a quick one, just to kind of keep the moisture level even. I don't want my plants struggling. I'd rather do a quick watering than not. Like I've said many, many, many times, containers are one of those things where you just when it comes to containers, you just have to water pretty much every day. Just kind of resign yourself to the fact that you need to really keep your containers moist. They will dry out quickly in the heat, especially in the heat of the summer. Now, in in the fall time, in the 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 in the fall time, even in the springtime, it's not as bad. But during the heat of the summer, 
in July right now, these things are gonna dry out almost daily. It did just rain here not long ago, so these aren't too dry. So I'm not doing a deep water like I really should be doing. A deep water would be, I would kind of hold the hose in here for 10 to 15 seconds at least. But because it wasn't dry, I'm just kind of adding, I'm just kind of wetting that top layer and letting it seep down through the mulch. Mulch also kind of helps um, keep it from, from fully drying out. But even still, you probably still, when it comes to containers, you're probably still looking at watering every day. So I'm pretty sure that I have blight on the tomatoes and that's what I'm seeing. And frankly, I'm probably gonna end up having to pull them out, but it's worth a shot to try to save them. So I mixed up some hydrogen peroxide and water. You can keep blight at bay off of your tomatoes, at least for a time by using a hydrogen peroxide and water spray. So in that ratio, somewhere between like eight to 12 tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide to, uh, to one gallon of water is best. Now, I already have <laughs> blight and if I only had like a little bit here and there, it might help, you know, I might be able to remove the damaged foliage and treat the remaining plant and kind of still keep it at bay. Right now, this is pretty much a Hail Mary pass. So my tomatoes are, are really covered and um, I doubt they're gonna recover. I, I'm gonna have to remove the foliage. I'm running out of light, so I may have to actually remove the foliage tomorrow. I'm gonna spray today, try to remove what I can. I may have to fully come out here and prune tomorrow, but I'm gonna have to pr prune quite a bit of these plants and they just may not recover from that. So. Generally speaking, if we were to mix up a hydrogen peroxide spray, you could, you know, and you maintain the schedule of it. Different people do different things. I should be doing like a once a week or once every two weeks spraying um, and more, maybe more often right after a rain just to kind of keep my tomato plants healthy. And I did do that last year. And honestly, it did work. I didn't have blight until much later in the season. I did get it, but it was much later in the season. Um, We've had such a really wet spring and summer. So I, I think that's the reason why it's coming on my plants now in July. But normally you would test spray. So, you know, eight to 12 tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water. You, you spray a, uh, one of your plants, spray a small portion of it, check the foliage the next day, make sure that there's not any more damage to it. Um, also, don't spray this in the middle of the afternoon and they don't spray this in the middle of the afternoon in the heat of the day. Uh, that's just not a good practice. I would do it first thing in the morning or in the evening, which is what I'm doing right now. So like I said, Hail Mary pass. Typically we would use hydrogen peroxide as a preventative um, spray for our tomatoes to kind of keep blight away. Since I already have it, I I have not sprayed throughout this growing season. I should have, um, but I did not spray throughout this growing season, but I already have it. So I'm gonna try and we're gonna see. We're gonna see if we can save them. If not, um, we got more to go in and it'll be okay. It, it's just one of those years. It's not gonna be a great tomato year. That's all right. Yeah, all of these like really just dead leaves. I'm just taking them off. Man, this foliage is just, this is pitiful. I do have fruit on here. Hydrogen peroxide spray is obviously not going to harm my fruit. It's something we put in our wounds and our cuts. So I'm not going to worry about getting it on the fruit, to be honest with you. These really damaged leaves, I'm gonna have to take them off, but there's there's so little foliage on this plant as it is, I'm kinda scared too. It's also highly possible that I may have a tomato hornworm out here. I'm, I'm kinda seeing some evidence 
but I, I don't see droppings and I don't see the, the defoliation that I would expect from a tomato hornworm. So I can't tell for certain. But either way, um, worrying about a tomato hornworm, the, the best way, thing that to do with those is you would come out at night with a black light and check for them. So tomato hornworms, tomato hornworms are something that they really blend in with the foliage. They're green, so they're really hard to see. The So uh, using a black night light and coming out at night, you'll see them moving around. But a tomato hornworm can decimate your tomato plant in like a day. And when we're talking about spraying for blight, we want to spray the, the all of the leaves. We just want to coat it, right? Under leaves, top part of the leaves, all the leaves, and you just really want to coat it. Like I said, these plants are probably beyond saving. I, I don't see, I don't see them coming back from this. And a lot of times this will happen when the rains come. Um, you know, you, you'll get like this huge rain and the, it, the ground is so wet. So we have a mulch down to kind of help prevent against splashback, you know, from the soil coming up on the leaves. But we just, we've had so much moisture this growing season. It's been um, unbelievably wet. And here that's made our plants grow really fast. It's been unbelievably wet, so they've grown really fast. But um, they haven't gotten the nutrients. It's like our plants are having a harder time uptaking nutrients. Uh, there's been more disease pressure and issues. There's been even some, in a lot of ways, I feel like I've dealt with more pest pressure this season, which is crazy. Again, um, the amount of like squash bugs I have dealt with this season already are nuts. But I, I you know, like I said, it's rained so much. We've gotten more rain in the last few weeks, I think, than we got most of last year. So it's kind of really important to spray the, the healthy foliage, if there's any healthy foliage on the plant, any foliage on the plant where it hasn't been overtaken by the disease yet, spray that as a preventative. Um, and it might kind of help the plant start to grow out of it. Like I said, I think it's beyond what we're gonna be able to do, but we're trying. Let's get those San Marzanos, cause um, our experiment tomatoes are even full of this disease. So we're gonna go get those and we're gonna, that on those, it does look like I can pull off some of the foliage and it might do well. Okay, we're gonna spray this one and this one. And the thing is, is I really did expect more disease issues with these because of the fact that we didn't do any pruning. This is one of the issues with not pruning, right? We reduce the amount of airflow that gets in here. So we create a breeding ground for funguses, for bacteria, for disease. The interesting thing to note is these that have had no intervention whatsoever did better and look better than the ones that we single stem prune and created airspace, uh, plenty of airspace in those. So it does look like we're not getting a lot of fruit off of this yet. Like I said, it's still kind of new. I mean, it's still kind of early and the, the fruits that we did have form, we have a few kind of forming. We did have a little bit of blossom and rot, but that's to be expected with the amount of moisture that we've had, how much rain we've had. The fact that this is kind of planted on a hill, it's slanted. This is not a bed that I anticipated to do well, honestly, when we built it and we put it together. You know, and this being planted on a hill, I mean, it's just kind of planted on the slope, on the down part of a slope. 
So that's unfortunately my backyard is very, very steep slope. And so that can create water issues as well, a lot of runoff and things like that. So that could be contributing to the, not only the disease, but the blossom and rot as well. Even though it's been raining a lot, there may not be a consistent amount of moisture in this area right here. Well, we'll see how they do. Um, like I said, I'll probably be pulling a lot of those out and planting in new plants here pretty soon in the near future, but that's okay. I have gotten some tomatoes. We just harvested a couple and we still got some time to grow, to grow some more. So we'll do fine. We'll have a good year either way. We're learning, we're growing, and we're becoming better gardeners along the way. So leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you're dealing with in your area. Are you guys dealing with blight? Are you dealing with a really wet growing season? Um, what's it like in your area? What are some of the struggles and challenges that you are facing? So thank you guys so much for hanging out in my garden with me today. May your garden be filled with grace and may you be abundantly blessed. We'll see you next time. Bye.